are listening to the Motherhood Unstress podcast, and I'm your host, Liz Carlisle. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm so glad you're here, as always. And this week, I'm thrilled to sit down with the amazing Katie Sackoff. You probably know her best from her roles in Battlestar Galactica, The Mandalorian, and the upcoming animated Watchmen feature. But beyond her iconic roles, Katie is a devoted mother of two. And in this episode, we're talking about how she balances her acting career with motherhood. And she also shares her family's journey through her young daughter's cancer diagnosis and treatment. This episode is all about resilience, legacy, and living life to the fullest. And I know after years of doing the show, I know when a guest is really going to touch the listener and uplift them and inspire them and give them courage to live a more beautiful life, which is at the root of this whole creative project. Um, and I know that what she's sharing with you today is going to impact you in a, in a big way. So I'm thrilled to be able to share this with you. Uh, if you like it, please share it out, leave us a review, and please enjoy this episode with actress Katie Sackoff. Well, hello, Katie. Welcome to the show. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for having me. Me too. Yeah, I mean, so many know you from your iconic roles in The Mandalorian, Battlestar Galactica, the list goes on. But um, <laughs> I'm curious about, about those pivotal moments in your early life, those little whispers that led you to the work that you're doing now to include your amazing podcast, The Sack Off Show. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I, I think that if we go back and hindsight is such a beautiful thing, a lot of times, you know, you can go back and you can actually look at the choices you made that led you to who you are in this moment. And, um, I think that some really huge things, uh, in my life led me to where I'm at. The biggest of which was, um, I dated some wonderful, wonderful men throughout my life, but it never felt a hundred percent like my person. Mm -hmm. um, and I really, really got to a point where I realized that, you know, maybe what I'd, the plan that I had in place for myself wasn't necessarily what the universe had in store for me. And I had to relinquish control of that. And as soon as I did that, I met my husband. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I think that that those are pivotal moments. You know, I, I think that that in my career, um, I, as soon as I was sort of gifted the luxury of, of choice, I really chose the career that I wanted to have and the projects that I wanted to do. Um, and I surrounded myself with a team that helped facilitate that. Um, and then, you know, as far as like finding myself where I'm at in this moment, like, you know, sort of diversifying with my show, I think COVID really had a hand in that, like it did with so many people and social media as well. At the same time that COVID happened and we were craving these authentic conversations, social media, in a sense, made me feel like we were losing that, that authenticity even more. Mm -hmm. um, and I missed my friends. And so I really started um, leaning into creating content that felt true and honest. And then out of that came wanting the conversations with people that I wasn't seeing as much. And then the podcast was sort of bored. I love that. And it is so true. It's like you have these conversations and you get offline and you just feel elated and, and opened up in such a way that I haven't found. Like, it's like you're having coffee with your best friend and then you leave and you feel better than when you first sat down, yeah. you know, and you get to do that again and again. And then on a higher level, share that with people all over the world and uplift them. I mean, yeah. I completely, like as a podcaster, I completely understand that. But then as an artist, as a creative person, I would imagine like for you, that's so life-giving. It is. I, you know, I think that the older you get in this industry, you know, I think that I was always prepared because everyone tried to prepare me that as you get to a certain age in this industry, the opportunities dry up. And I was always like, no, 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 they don't. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. But I was in the back of my mind. I was prepared. And when I realized sort of getting to the place where I'm at now, where I am in my 40s, I realized it's not, it's not that, that 
the, that you're not able to work as much. I think that, that there are opportunities available. I think what, what it truly is, is not that you get to 40 and they're like, "Ah, we don't need her anymore. But what it is, is you do get to a certain age and there are fewer roles. There are much fewer roles and, and you are competing with the same amount of women that you always were. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is that, that, luxury of choice that I found earlier in my career started to dwindle as I got older. And I started to start to feel um, sort of like I had to take things to work. And I didn't like that. Mm. I didn't like that. And so what, what podcasting gave me was the opportunity to do something different And stay in the conversation without having to go take jobs that I didn't want to take. Um, And so I found it really important, especially in the last year. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Because again, it comes back to authenticity. You know, you are such an authentic presence in the work that you do. You can feel it on the screen when you watch you, when you watch your, your performances, but then also on the social media side, you know, you're hanging out with your family, your children, you're watching Formula One, like, yeah. I love it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so I think people are able to see you more as a human being. How has motherhood particularly shifted your perspective on career, on life, on what success really means? Oh my God. I mean, how hasn't it, to be honest, you know? I think that the moment my daughter was born, our first daughter, we have two children now, but our first daughter was born, I realized that what I wanted, whilst still important, was not the primary focus. Um, I needed to make sure that that this person, this human being, you know, had a life that I want, that we wanted to provide for her. And, 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 you know, of course that's a a financial stability, but I think that it's so much more important than that. We wanted her to have adventure. We wanted her to feel loved. We wanted her to see me daily. Um, We wanted things that, that we were not provided potentially as children for no fault of our parents, you know, um, It was very different. My parents went back to work within weeks of me being born. Um, And, you know, I really, we knew that the first couple years were incredibly formative. And so the decision was to work as little as possible. Um, And I just realized that, that, that that was the primary focus of my life. I also, my mom used to say this this thing that drove me crazy. And you will, she always said to me, you will never understand how much I love you until you have children. And I was always like, God, she's such a martyr. (laughs) And while that may be true, um, (laughs) she was so correct. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. I had no idea. I have loved things. I had loved people and animals and I had loved things that I, that I still consider unconditionally, but something happens to happen to me. I can't say this about everybody. Something happened to me where I instantaneously, my heart, I was like the Grinch and my heart grew, Mm -hmm. you know, three times the size that it was. So I didn't love these things less that I had in my life. I just had the ability. My heart grew so much. I have so much more love to give now. And so much more protection to give now. I became so, that mama bear adage became so true. I just wanted to protect every child everywhere. Um, And yeah, motherhood just turned me into a very, very different person. There's a, there's a calmness um, that sort of came over me as well. And just sort of like, this is my purpose. This, she is, they are my purpose now. And I, I, I do want to touch on the fact that you have been more open about your daughter's diagnosis yeah. and um, navigating that. How do you Absolutely. navigate the emotional ups and downs that come with that? God, you know, it's so funny. It's, um, 
it's still, it's very overwhelming. You know, anytime, you know, I've met a lot of caretakers, um, since our daughter has, um, been diagnosed, you know, she was diagnosed at eight months old with a, a rare form of pediatric cancer. And then even more rare, um, on top of that is, um, her exact genetic makeup, which makes her one of the only children in the world <laughs> that have the exact, um, genetic makeup of her tumors, tumor, um, rather. So I, I think what sort of happened a little bit was when I was 27, I myself had thyroid cancer and, and while it was never life threatening, it was life altering. And I learned at a very young age, because I do think 27 is very young. I learned at a very young age that if, that you have to be your own medical advocate, you have to, and it's not that the medical system or the doctors and the nurses don't want what's best for you. It's that there are so many patients that they care about so many sick children that they care about. You have to take yourself and your journey and your medical prognosis as the priority and you have to figure it out yourself. And, and, and that's not to say that, you don't trust your doctors. You don't trust science. That is not what I'm saying. What I am saying is if you find someone who doesn't give you the hope that you're looking for, find someone else because there are a myriad of doctors that specialize in different things that, that may have heard of a study that was going on in Germany that could potentially help you. You never know. One doctor cannot do it all. You need a team. Um, but I think that, that, you know, people ask me all the time or they say to me all the time that I'm so strong to be able to go through what we're going through and still work and put on a brave face. Um, you, you don't know what you're capable of until you have to be capable of it. You know, I, I was not born this person. I was not this person two years ago, when our daughter was diagnosed with cancer, you become strong because you have to be. You become brave because you have to be. The alternative is you crawl into a corner and you cry all day long. Well, that doesn't help anybody, especially when you're trying to keep someone alive. That doesn't help anyone. So, so you wake up every day, you pull on your big girl pants, and you figure it out every day because you don't have a choice. Um, and I think that everyone else would do the exact same thing. I think that every parent would do the exact same thing. Um, and so, you know, it's, it has been hard, but we also have just a village of people. You know, we've, we've surrounded ourselves and we have the luxury to be able to surround ourselves with a, um, not only family, we moved to Oregon to be closer to family, but we also have a nanny and we have a night nurse to help with our son because we knew we couldn't be tired and also going through chemo during the day with our daughter. So we have that. That is not lost on me. Most people going through what we have or what we're going through or something similar do not have that support. And that is, is incredibly hard and challenging. Yeah. What do you do as a family to stay grounded and present to find joy in every day when really (laughs) most people would end up in a corner and just be like, I don't want to do this anymore? You can't get caught up in the what if. Because the truth of the matter is we have no control about the outcome of our life, really, You can control all the things that you want. You can eat healthy. You can work out. You can be safe and wear your seatbelt and you cannot drink too much and you cannot take risk and you cannot, you could do everything right. And you could walk out and get hit by a car. You could have a brain aneurysm tomorrow. You could, you have no idea when this beautiful gift of life is over. You have no idea. 
So don't, I can't get caught up in the prognosis of our daughter because every day is a gift. Every single day is a gift with her. It's a gift for me. It's a gift for her. It's a gift for everyone who meets her because she is so funny and so resilient and so beautiful. I don't know how long it's going to last. We have absolutely no idea. So you can't get caught up in it. You just have to live in the moment and just love as much as you can. How do you balance the the aspects of being a public person and then dealing with something like this, the challenges? I mean, life is challenging. This is an enormous challenge that you're dealing with right now in real time. Mm. How do you how do you balance being Katie the the famous actress versus Katie the mom and woman? That's hard, you know. That is hard because I'm also going through a transition in my career, like we talked about earlier, where, you know, not only are there not as many opportunities as there were, but I chose to take time off. And then there was a strike. <laughs> you know, so um um that has been hard. That has been hard because I find myself losing a piece of what I think my life was while also dealing with all of this stuff that's going on. So I think that that it goes back to what we were talking about originally. It's just this 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 complete open authenticity at every moment of your life. You know, the podcast has provided me the opportunity to have conversations with people outside of what I'm going through in my daily life, which has been wonderful. And it it takes me out of that, which has been great. Um, and and then also it just, you know, acknowledging that that, you know, life is about seasons. And and this is just a new one and it's different. And, you know, if you want to live a full life, like I always said, God, I just want to live the fullest life. That means everything. That means the good. That means the bad. That means the tragedy. That means the 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 successes and the joy and the beauty and it's all of it. Yeah. You know, that's a successful life. Can you can you talk about a time where you felt really strong and really resilient during this season of life. Do you draw mm. upon these wild women characters that you played <laughs> in your, in your very real life? You know, it's funny. It's, um, um, I keep going back to, I go back to the characters that I've played and I go back to the loss that they've had in their life because that is, I think where their strength lies, you know, um, and I never really understood it until I got older. And which is the irony of this business. It's the irony of life, you know, yeah. that that as we get older, less is required of us. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, like I find that that, you know, I joke now that like, you know, these characters that I played when I was younger required so much of an emotional capacity that I had not actually and like experienced in my own life. And now that I have all this life experience, they're like, oh, no, no, no. You just play a lawyer. You just stand there and do nothing. You just, and I'm like, no, give me something needy. I need therapy. Like I need to get this, I need to get this crap out of me. Yeah. Um, but I find myself thinking about moments in characters that where they did experience that loss, you know, like my character in Longmire felt responsible for the loss of her child and the, tra the tragedy of that and the strength of her to get up and keep going. I think about Bo-Katan and, and how she was responsible for the death of her sister. And she was not leading a morally um, positive life. She got up, she kept going, and she adjusted who she was as a human being and continued to grow and continued to evolve. And that is the thing with, I think, loss and char these characters, these strong women that I've always played, is that you don't ever get over loss. You never get over it. You never get over tragedy. It becomes a piece of you. It changes you at your core. And then you keep going. You keep living your life. Um, and so I think that is what makes these women strong. 
And I view them differently now than I did before. I thought just because they were strong and they were tough and they were, you know, like had this machismo and they were masculine and they were, they were these really tough women that has absolutely nothing to do with their strength. Their strength lied in their ability to just keep going. And, and that's a, a wonderful lesson. And I think that's a choice too, right? I mean, you you decide to keep going and you're almost softer towards the world and to people who you recognize as hurting or or going through something themselves. Like I, I lost my sister to cancer. And I swear after that, I was... I'm so sorry. Thanks. But it was it softened me in so many ways. And I was more compassionate, more patient, more understanding because of that. But I think at the same time, you can shut down too. You can yeah. go the other way. So it is a, a courageous choice to be growing and learning and evolving because yeah. you can choose not to too. Absolutely. I know it's beautifully said. It, it First of all, I'm so sorry for your loss. I, I just, I cannot imagine, you know, what you're going through. Um, I, I think that you're right to continue to leave your heart open is courageous Mm -hmm. because the pain of loss is so hard. It's so hard. It hurts so much. And and it's all relative, you know, like I tell my friends all the time because they always, you know, they feel bad calling me and bitching about their life or whatever's going on in their life. And they're like, God, I shouldn't be doing this with you. It's like, yeah, you should. It's all relative. You don't have any idea what I'm going through. So you can't possibly, like, you can't adjust your level of discomfort for the things that are happening in your life based on what is happening to other people out in the world. You only know what's happening to you. And right now, you know, the fact that your baby is not sleeping through the night and you are exhausted, that is tragic. Yeah. Let's figure that out. You know, like, like it doesn't, it doesn't make what other people are going through less than, you know, um, you know, there are people probably listening that went through a a breakup and it destroyed them. The, the, the courage to keep your heart open to someone else, if you choose, that's really courageous because that heartache is devastating, you know? So there are people all over doing, doing just that, staying open, staying available, staying, you know, emotionally connected and ready to live life. That's hard. Yeah. What would you say to the parents tuning in who might be going through something similar? They've just gotten a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, at the entering stages of all of this. What, what do you wish someone would have said to you at the very beginning? Mm. God, I, I don't know if anyone could have said anything to me. I really don't. I don't know. You know, I, I think that one of the biggest lessons was that everybody handles things differently. You know, everyone goes through bad news differently. And everybody sort of, you know, we all, including myself and my husband, we we both process news differently. We're different people. And so you can't hold that against someone when they're not, when what they're choosing to do and the way they're choosing to handle something doesn't look familiar to you. That's what they're doing. They have to do that. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. Um. I think that the most important thing that I've learned, and I've always known this in life, I've always known this in life, it could always be worse. So don't dwell on it, but acknowledge that where you're at is still joyful and there's still hope. Like don't lose hope ever. Um, That is the most important thing. Like I said before, if you get a diagnosis that you don't like, don't go find someone that's going to lie to you. Mm. 
because knowledge is power. And I've also learned a lot of people in medical, in, in, in different forms of, of medical, um, diagnosis or diagnosee, whatever the word would be. Um, a lot of times people don't want the knowledge. They don't want to know, you know, for us, God, knowledge is power. You know, we have to know everything because like I said, if you have that knowledge, it opens up other potential treatments because there may be someone just like you, you know? So I would just say, don't stop. Don't, if you don't like what you're being told, go get a second opinion, get a third opinion, get a fourth opinion. Doctors don't care. They all talk to each other. It's, they don't care. They don't take it personally. Um, so that's what I would say. I would just say, don't stop and never give up hope. Never, ever, ever give up hope. I love that. And I think just even saying that, putting that as a seed in someone's mind who's tuning into this, it's like, oh, it, it's not a big deal to just go to someone else to ask questions to, if someone says something to you to be like, well, what, what do you mean by that? Or like get some more information out of them. Yeah. Like that's literally their job is to help yeah. you. So it's okay. Well, and I also think that, you know, you know, we, like I said, we are fortunate in that we had the ability to say, no, we found a surgeon in Philadelphia. We want to do the surgery. We're going to go to Philadelphia. Now we're in Philadelphia. No, we found a doctor here that we want to talk to. We're going to go there. We were lucky to do to have that. There are <clears throat> so many charities in place to help families financially to be able to do that kind of stuff. So don't let your the restrictions on your financial ability to do something hold you back. There are people to help you find the care that you need. So don't stop. Just don't stop. I love that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, gosh, we are almost at the end of time. I could talk to you for so long, but I, uh, you're still quite young. But um, have you thought about what you would like your legacy to be? Is it charity work through acting outlaws? Is it, you know, just how you move through the world, the energy that you bring to a room? Have you thought about your legacy and what you'd like to leave with the world? God. You know, I hope that I'm provided the gift to leave this world before my children. That would be huge. Um, I don't know. You know, I, 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 I hope that the legacy is that I brought joy to the world and loved super, super, super hard. <laughs> you know, I hope that's it. It's not my work. It's not my work. Um, you know, at the end of, I think so many people have talked people who, who work in palliative care and hospice have talked about how at the end of someone's life, they never talk about their career or the money or the trips they went. They don't talk about that shit. They talk about, do the people in my life know I love them? Did I love? Because that's, that's why we want more time. We want more time to be with the people that we love. So I hope that's my legacy. I hope I live to 120. <laughs> <laughs> so I can just keep doing that, you know, because there's so much joy in it. There is. And we can end on that. But I always end the episode with, if you had one final message for the person tuning into this one-on-one, -on -one, what mm. would you want to leave with the listener today? It could be about anything. Oh, my gosh. It's so hard. It's so, what a great question. Yeah. I personally would just say, stay open mm -hmm. in all aspects of your life. You know, stay open with your time, stay open with your, the adventures that you're willing to go on, stay open with your heart and, you know, because that's what leads you in fun directions. Yeah. Absolutely agree. And that I think your life is a testament to that following that joy, that passion, that openness to life. So Katie, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for the work that you do. Thank you for your time today. 
And uh, where can our listener, as if they didn't already know, connect <laughs> with you online and listen to the yeah. Sack Off show? Absolutely. So I am um, on, you know, I am on X, not there a lot, um, but that's Katie Sackoff. I am on Instagram as the real Katie Sackoff. And then the Sackoff show is on YouTube and everywhere that you find your podcasts. Beautiful. Well, thank you again. I love this conversation and uh, I just look forward to following your journey as it continues. So thank you. Thank you so much. I love this. Thank you, Liz. You have been listening to the Motherhood Unstressed podcast, where we navigate the beautiful chaos of motherhood together. For more inspiration and insights, please visit our website at motherhoodunstressed.com, or you can visit me on social at Motherhood Unstressed. Remember, you are not alone in this journey. Until next time, stay unstressed, empowered, and embrace the joy of motherhood. Take care, and I'll catch you on the next episode.